I'm going to be tasting the 2021 vintage of the Massacan Winery Ania, uh, a white wine from Napa Valley. This particular wine was featured on a podcast about Veganuary, which I didn't know how to pronounce or exactly what that was until I looked it up, but it's going vegan in January. And we had a special guest on that podcast, Gabriel De Bella, who is the head sommelier, the wine director at 11 Madison Park, which is a three Michelin star restaurant in New York, which went completely plant-based over the last couple of years. Um, it had already had three Michelin stars, then it went plant-based, and then it maintained its Michelin star status. So it's a fascinating podcast. Um, Gabrielle is just a lovely person, so knowledgeable about wine, but really interesting to talk about his philosophy with pairing wines with vegan foods. And even if you're not vegan, you will enjoy the episode. It's just a really fascinating conversation. And this wine certainly does not have to pair just with vegan food. It is very, very versatile. Um, so Massacan, the winery, is named for um, Monte Masico, which is a region in Campania that had a big impact on the owner and the winemaker of this wine, Dan Petrosky. Uh, Anya is named for his Italian mother. Dan is not Italian. Uh, he's from the United States. He went to Colombia, uh, came out to Napa and made quite a name for himself. He made wine at Larkmead for many years. He was named the San Francisco Chronicle Winemaker of the Year. And this, though, is his own personal brand, his own project, Massacan. And it's the only, as of now, all white wine producing winery in Napa Valley. Dan also was a guest on a podcast, but on a different uh, episode where ironically, we didn't really taste his wines. But um, anyway, uh, you'll definitely get to know him if you listen to the podcast. So here in Napa Valley, we're planted, which is where I live, we were planted about 75% to red grape varieties. Then after that, when you start talking about white wine grapes, you'll hear, you know, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, maybe Riesling, varieties that you would know, international varieties. But there's always been kind of a fascination by certain very iconic Napa winemakers with some white grape varieties that are indigenous to Italy. And uh, people like John Consgard, Steve Mathiasen, and a certain member of this group in the 90s, George Vare, he actually brought cuttings from Friuli, which is a region in the northeast of Italy, of Ribola Gialla back to Napa. And some of these exact vine cuttings are producing Ribola Gialla that is in this bottle. So this is a blend of Ribola Gialla, an Italian white wine variety, uh, Friulano, which is an Italian white wine variety, and Chardonnay, which of course is international. Now, just to clear up a little confusion about Friulano, you might also hear this grape variety referred to as Tokai Friulano. Um, these days, it's much more common just to call it Friulano. There is, was a little confusion because there is a, a wine producing region in Hungary called Tokai, which is very famous for absolutely ethereal, gorgeous, um, botrytized dessert wines, which you haven't had, you, you definitely should, uh, made from ferment and harcibelu, but that's a rabbit hole, so we're not gonna go deeper in that. But anyway, this is why so you'll hear it Tokai Friulano or Friulano, but it is the same grape variety, in fact. So um, let's taste this wine together. Um, I'd really like you to pay attention, if you haven't tasted with me before, that pay attention to not just what you're tasting, but actually how the wine feels on your palate. If you've tasted with me before, you've probably heard me say this a thousand times, so apologies. But let's take a look first in the glass. It's kind of very pale lemon. On the nose, there's um, a lot of citrus for sure, kind of like a lemon zest, um, like Sicilian lemon. Um, I'm definitely getting some fresh cut pear on this. There's um, a, a, a herbal note as well, kind of like wild herbs, like field herbs. And just really, really fresh. It kind of just reminds me of kind of walking along the beach and you get this kind of, you know, uh, fresh ocean breezes. All right, let's taste it. So if you're paying attention to what you're feeling, the first thing that I feel, if you're like me, is that my mouth is watering. So this is definitely 
a very fresh sort of medium plus to high acid white wine. I'd call it only, only medium minus in terms of body. Um, there's no sweetness to this wine. This is completely dry, so fermented to dryness. There's no oak on this wine either. And ways you might notice that is in any of the descriptors, whether it's on the nose or what you're tasting now on the palate, which we'll get to in a minute, um, there's no sort of um, toastiness or sometimes you get these baking spices with oak like clove, vanilla, nutmeg, none of that. It's really, really very focused on this pure, pristine fruit notes. And if you didn't get it from the aromas of the flavors, I can also feel it on the palate. So oak, when wine is aged, whether white or red, in oak barrels, it tends to have sort of a more breadth of palate, whereas this is sort of very focused. It's sort of very um, narrow, has a direction forward on my palate. And there's also sort of this beautiful texture where even on the finish, there's there's an interest there. And this was really something that we talked about actually on the podcast with Sommelier Gabriel de Bella with pairing vegetables with wine and that it's more just than structure or flavor. It's really about how do you bring out textures in vegetables without the added protein uh, to mesh with the wine. And so he likes very textural wines as well to pair with those. Um, in terms of flavors, I'm really getting that fresh cut pear again, very much on the palate. There's a yellow apple. There's again, that kind of like bright herb note to it, but it's just, it's just fresh. It's fun. It's exuberant. These are wines that are really meant to be on the table. I certainly would happily drink a wine of this, uh, a glass of this by itself, but I would easily pair this with anything from the ocean, um, cheeses, goat cheese, anything with high acid. Uh, Chipino would be lovely with this. And again, of course, don't forget vegetarian and vegan food as well.